So you're connected. I didn't even think about that. Well, thank you all very much for taking the time to be here. And uh, it's uh, uh, today's a, an important day in San Francisco, and I think this is an extraordinarily important announcement. San Francisco is now a beneficiary of the largesse of the federal government in terms of creating the opportunity to create thousands, not just up to a thousand, but thousands of jobs that are federally supported through the American Recovery Act. We launched this initiative quietly a few months back, and 214 people are now employed because of this initiative. $1.8 billion was set aside by the federal government in the state of California for this program. The eligibility for people that are unemployed, that look to seek employment, is the following. You simply have to be a member of a family earning, if you're unemployed, below a 200 percent of federal poverty threshold. Now, again, if you have a child and you're unemployed, you're not earning anything. So the presumption is automatically then you can enroll and engage in this program and get a job that is reimbursed by the federal government up to 100 percent, in most cases 80 percent overall. These are jobs that are not necessarily menial jobs, meaning they're not just a job that pays you nine bucks an hour or 9.79 our minimum wage. These are jobs that pay you 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 thousand dollars. In fact, there's no cap in terms of the salary for these jobs. We have a protocol up to 75 thousand. If someone is applying for a job north of 75 thousand, we will review that job. But people up to 75 thousand are eligible automatically in this program. But again, there's no cap. It could be a $200,000 job. The eligibility is not just being a member of our CalWORKs program or our PAYS program, uh, which is part of our local CAP program. I don't want to bore you, but a lot of us in this room understand what that means, probably no one at home. The point, though, I'm saying is if you are someone who has a child and you are unemployed, you are now eligible for a program that can provide the support to the private sector, not just the nonprofit sector and not just the public sector, and subsidize the cost of that job. So employer needs an employee, but the employer can't afford the employee. We will basically pick up the cost. It sounds almost too good to be true. And in many ways, when I first learned of this, it made more sense than any other initiative from my perspective that was coming from the American Recovery Act because it does the one thing that the American Recovery Act needs to be doing and that's creating jobs. These jobs though are jobs with a timeline. The timeline is September 2010. The money basically runs out after September 2010. The hope and expectation is the employers will be so satisfied with their employees that by that time the economy has turned around a bit, and they, of course, are getting the benefit, those new employees, that the employers will keep those employees hired. But at least between now and September of 2010, well over the next year or so, we will have the benefit of these dollars flowing into the city and county of San Francisco. This is probably the biggest, I, it certainly is in the 14 years or so that I've been in local office, there's never been a jobs program like this. This is the most significant jobs program that's ever been announced in the city and county of San Francisco. Private employers should rejoice. Private employers should be jumping over themselves to hire people from the city and county of San Francisco for obvious reasons. It doesn't cost them any money. They have to keep their commitment to the benefits like Social Security, but the base wage salary, again, is reimbursed by the federal government. There is no cost in terms of those base wages. So this is a program that we hope employers quickly learn more about. That's why Steve Falk is here from the Chamber of Commerce, because I know he's eager to promote this and to talk about it and disseminate information. But we're here at a one-stop shop, one of now six in San Francisco. We've doubled the number of one-stop shops in the last 12 months, something that I think deserves a lot more attention, candidly, than it's received. 
because this is an opportunity for everyone that comes here looking for a job that is having a hard time finding an employer with money to provide that job to get that job. You can come to one-stop shops like this, or you can simply call us at 311. Call 311, ask about this new federal job program, and they will direct you to the appropriate agency to give you that information. Call 301 at 4 in the morning. Someone will answer your call and give you the appropriate information to learn about how you can get these jobs. We said 1,000. That's an arbitrary cap. For every 1,000 jobs we create, we invest about $25 million. But there's $1.8 billion out there for California. So we want to be as aggressive as we possibly can. And that's the purpose of this announcement. There should be 10 cameras here. I mean that sincerely. Because I've never, as I said, I, I don't want to overstate this, and I don't want to be too exuberant <laughs> at peril of, of, of being accused of being overly exuberant. But this is federal dollars that are coming down to subsidize jobs in San Francisco for those that are unemployed that have the only requirement of being unemployed with a child. So anyone who's unemployed with a child, please call 311 if you're a resident of San Francisco, and we could provide all the money for an employer that we can match you with so the employer doesn't have to spend a penny outside, again, those basic benefits that they have to afford, but no base wage dollars to create a real job in this economy. So I, I'm here just to promote that, to reinforce the opportunity. I think this is big news, uh, and I think I want to thank the Department of Human Services and Trent Rohr for his leadership and stewardship through this process. Uh, we've tried to be front and center in this discussion in Washington, D.C., and we're doing the same thing in the state of California with some new legislation that allows us that threshold I just referenced. The requirement is you have to be below 200 percent of federal poverty. But I want to remind you that if you don't have a job, by definition, you have no income, you're most likely below that. Just to give you a perspective of what that means, if you have a husband or a partner that is earning north of $36,000, you're now no longer eligible if you're a family of three. So you have a partner, a husband, wife, and he or she or he or he are making over 36000 with the child, then you're no longer eligible. But if you're both unemployed, you automatically are eligible if you've got a child. Or someone's just got a part-time job in your family earning less than 36000 you're going to get the opportunity to get these jobs. And so we want to uh, not only, again, highlight this, but I want to thank Congress and our president for a very innovative program. This is, as I said, what the stimulus program, from my perspective, should be all about. It's about job growth and job creation uh, and about bridging this economic challenge and creating a framework where these jobs could be made more permanent and bridge that challenge so people have the opportunity uh, to work their way back up the economic ladder. So we're launching this. It's already been rolled out, as I said, for 214 people. We wanted to wait until we had critical mass to announce it. Uh, and we've got a guy here, Robert Miller, who will tell you about how he has taken advantage of this and how so many of his employees have taken advantage of this and how excited he is that this is going to continue to grow and why it's made a big difference in the lives of, Robert, what, 40 people that you have now hired through this program that I imagine you would never have had the money to hire in the past. And these folks wouldn't have jobs had you not had the entrepreneurial spirit that led you to the idea that created the business in the first place. And you see to his left, um, your right, Rhonda Simmons, uh, who also has been front and center, who runs all our workforce training uh, programs, which are also a big part of this. Six million dollars of the federal stimulus goes to workforce training, where we have a health care academy, a green economy academy, in order to create workforce training opportunities in these areas where there are real jobs being created and job growth uh, that is currently taking shape. Final point, again, this is not just private sector jobs. Uh, these are nonprofit jobs. These are city jobs as well, where the city has no base wage payroll expense uh, if indeed we want to hire uh, folks. So 311, the magic number to call. All those other numbers, just 
disabuse yourself of them. They just confuse you. Uh, 311 will direct you to those other places. Um, and uh, that's the easiest way to learn about your eligibility. With that, I want to introduce, well, Trent, why don't you give a, well, why don't, I'll bring up Steve Falk, though. Uh, Steve Falk, uh, the head of the chamber, uh, who, again, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I got to think he's excited about this uh, in this economy and uh, eager to promote this. He'll say a few words, then we'll turn it over to Trent and Robert, uh, and then we will uh, complete with uh, the, the, the press conference with our expert in workforce training, Rhonda, and then we'll happily answer any questions you may have. Well, thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Newsom. The, the Chamber of Commerce and the business community is, is exuberant ab about this program, and there's every reason to be exuberant. We've been talking about economic stimulus for months and months and months. Uh, this is a real example of how we can bridge between the thousands of unemployed San Franciscans, many with children, and the thousands of San Francisco businesses that need help. We all know that the key to economic recovery is simple, but it's difficult to achieve. It's jobs. It's putting people back to work. This program will connect those dots. It will connect employers with unemployed San Franciscans. The Chamber of Commerce will be the pipeline between the mayor's office, uh, between human services, and the business community. We, our goal is to let every employer know that if you need help, now is the time to hire. Now is the time to open the doors. This program will reimburse 100% of the payroll cost. Employers will have to pay the taxes. They'll have to pay their normal benefit costs. But this program pays the wage. So now is the time to hire. Now is the uh, time to put people back to work. Uh, thanks for being here. And I think uh, Trent Rohr will fill in some of the details. Trent? Hi, everyone. I'm Trent Rohr, the director of the Human Services Agency. Um, about a year ago, as the economy started unraveling, I was on a panel, and I think Rhonda might have been with me, and, and it was a probably two, three hundred people in the audience asking about the impact on folks who are on public assistance and what are we going to do. And to give you some context, in San Francisco we have about 5,200 families who are on CalWORKs and we have about uh, 3,000 single adults who are on our employment program called PAYS, which the mayor referenced. And you know, I didn't really have a good answer. Uh, as, as folks with tremendous resumes and job skills are, are getting laid off and struggling to find work, and you look at the 8,000, 9,000 or so San Franciscans who are on public assistance who also need work, uh, knowing that they're going to have to compete with folks with such great uh, job histories and resumes. The answer I came up with back then, not knowing what was going to be in the future, was I think we need a publicly funded jobs program. And uh, we had a little bit of a mechanism through our CalWORKs program to, to do it for a few people, you know, 50 to 100, but, but nothing of this scale. And then the federal stimulus package went through uh, a number of months later, and lo and behold, we have the opportunity to do it. So I'm extremely excited. When I look at the job board over there, when you walk in to the, to the one stop um, and look to your left, you'll see the job postings for jobs now for this program. And you look at the wages, and the wages start around $12. There's a $20 an hour, there's a $17 an hour, there's a $22.50 an hour job for folks who are looking for work, not only who are on public assistance, but now, uh, given the, the state budget that passed, folks, as the mayor said, up to 200% of poverty. This is, for the Human Services Agency, probably the biggest initiative that will impact positively the most people since Care Not Cash in 2004. We anticipate not only 1,000 people, which was our initial goal, which would pump $25 million in wages into the local economy, we could get as high as 2,000, 3,000. It's really dependent on, on the private sector partnership, partnerships with the nonprofit sector and, and public sector jobs. And of course, folks who are unemployed and who need jobs who come through these, this center and five other centers across the city. We couldn't be more excited. We, we have the last probably six weeks, it's been all hands on deck for HSA. And, and I have to recognize my great team, Jim Buick, uh, Tony Lugo, Noel Simmons, Steve Arcelona, Dave Curdo. Um, our budget team, um, I'm going to miss a lot of folks, uh, 
they have really been burning the midnight oil to put this together in a really quick fashion. Um, the state budget language that allow, allowed us to expand to 200% of poverty just passed a couple weeks ago, and we're ready to go and to place people into jobs right now. Um, before I, I, I turn it over, I just I, I have to say, you know, through the mayor's leadership uh, and, and hiring and appointing Rhonda Simmons, we couldn't have a better partner uh, overseeing the workforce development system. Uh, Rhonda understands the dynamic I just talked about, about in a down economy, folks who are on public assistance with some barriers to employment struggling to find jobs and competing against folks who, candidly on paper, uh, it's no competition. Uh, and it's jobs like these, training programs like the ones uh, Rhonda is leading, putting together, that are helping not only families who are struggling to make ends meet and don't find a job, but through programs like this, helping the local economy. $25 million pumped into the economy, just 1,000 jobs. Um, that's real stimulus. Those are real jobs. And uh, the partnership with Rhonda is one that's really going to make this go forward. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rhonda Simmons just to say a few words and then uh, introduce um, our, our featured participant, um, Robert Miller, who is really, uh, um, I saw in an email a couple days ago, he wants to hire up to 100 people. So uh, you know, maybe we could even push him further on that. But, but before we turn it over to Robert, here's uh, Rhonda. I just want to reiterate what you've already heard and add a few more points to what has already been discussed. I have spent the morning mining the field for sites and I agree with the mayor and Trent that this is, this is the stimulus, this is the job recovery program that we've all been looking for. As the mayor um, talked about, we've added, we've doubled our capacity of one, of one stops which will act as one of the access points for this Jobs Now program. We are looking to expand the Jobs Now program to a whole host of folks that come through our job fairs, that are, have been laid off in the finance industry, in the healthcare industry, in the retail and hospitality industry. We are mining employers through our workforce investment board. So in addition to Trent's all hands on deck, my shop is also working hard to make sure we have enough sites. We are also looking at extending this to our, we ran a summer youth employment stimulus program, and particularly for our folks that are 18 to 24 that qualify and meet the criteria, we are looking to sort of bridge them to the next step to the Jobs Now program. So I just want to emphasize what's already been said, that this is truly economic stimulus working in every facet in every way. And the more we can develop sites across the board, so any employers that are listening now, as the mayor said, please, 311. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Robert Miller, Director of Books for the Internet Archive. And I have to say, this is marvelous. I never thought we'd have an opportunity like this, with all the gloom and despair economically, to be able to cast a ray of hope out across a city such as San Francisco. And Mr. Mayor, just to personalize it for a minute, um, I don't think there's anything more exciting than to be able to offer 40 people jobs than being one of the 40 people, like Tracy sitting here, who can say yes and take a job. And Tracy, if I may, um, you were laid off in December. You have four children. Uh, and when I asked you yesterday how this has impacted you, you said one word, relief. And yeah. if we can continue to do this on a personal level like this, again and again and again, we're going to win. Yeah. So I'd like to talk just briefly about what are we doing with our CalWORKs workers? How are we trying to leverage Ford? Well, the San Francisco Public Library and the Internet Archive share a common vision of trying to provide access to books and information, not only in our branch libraries, but to put it out in the public domain online. So we've been working very aggressively over the last several of months. And the thing that we were missing wasn't books. It wasn't resources in terms of engineering or equipment. It was labor. And so the CalWORKs program is allowing us to hire up to 100 people to do, to do 1,000 books a day to get educational materials out online, um, historical materials, genealogical materials, cultural materials to help generate a digital worker going forward and to share San Francisco's wealth of experience and knowledge with the world at large. So with the San Francisco Public Library, with CalWORKs, the great job that the people are doing here in terms of the interviewing and the setup, we think we have a combination that can't be beat. It's a three-legged stool that no one's going to knock us off our mountaintop. So our role, goal actually is not 100, but it's 311. So we want to hire 311 people if we can do this right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good.
I love it. Well, thank you, and uh, and thanks for personalizing it. It's, uh, it's a great story. That's what it's all about. And uh, and again, this is real and rare. I mean, honestly, you do this job for so long, and you don't. You, you sometimes you don't even believe what you're saying. Uh, and I can't believe that I'm here because I'm. I, I can't believe I'm saying that we're doing this because it does truly. I kid, I kid you not, sound good, too good to be true. That's why I've been testing this for about six months with Trent saying, come on, what's the catch? What are we missing here? Uh, but we're not missing anything. And, uh, and the only thing right now, well, we are missing one thing, and that is dis disseminating this, letting the public know. Um, I wish there was some crisis that would have brought everybody, our reporters out today, uh, that we all see. But the economic crisis is such uh, that perhaps we've gotten a little bit callous about the, the challenge and the crisis, but this is, a, as uh, Robert said, I think uh, a bright light, uh, and uh, we're just a few hundred jobs into this, and it's limitless, so it's all about how quickly we can scale it and get folks to match their opportunities with these employers. So with that, happy to answer we, all of us, any questions that you may have on this. Yeah, as long as they meet the federal poverty level. So, Trey, you can explain that. But it, as long as you're below that federal poverty level, even with those unemployment benefits, you're still eligible. Yeah, it's a the federal poverty level is it ranges very by, varied by uh, family size. For a family of three, which is our, our typical family, uh, it's thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars in, in unemployment benefits on an annual basis wouldn't meet that threshold typically. A family of four. Again, this is, in your case, you're a family of four. You've got three kids. It goes to 44, or you have five kids. Uh, four kids in you, so it goes up, what, $56,000. That made you eligible. For a family of four, it's $44,000. So again, I say 36, don't think that it's just 36. If you're someone uh, in a family, a large family, and, and your husband or wife or your partner is earning a little bit more than that doesn't mean you won't be eligible. Again, the eligibility chart will provide you so you can understand more fully. I, I, I don't want, again, people to just think 36,000 is it. Uh, that's just for a family of three. Family of four, 44,000, 56 plus thousand, family of five, it keeps going up. And again, the jobs have no limit in terms of salaries. Uh, we're just agreeing to a threshold of 75,000 to start but we'll make exceptions as long as we don't want to find out someone just hired their niece uh, for $283,000 a year. Uh, we got to check those out. Uh, so that's the only reason we, we have sort of basic thresholds here. Don't want to see any abuse, quite the contrary of this. You're mentioning a lot about family. Is it okay for somebody who's just unemployed and single to be a part of the program or not? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the program is targeted to families at the federal level with one exception. If you're a, a non-custodial parent. So if you're a, a dad who has children who may be taken care of by someone else, you would be eligible. That would be the one exception for someone who's living alone. But you have to have kids somewhere. And we have all kinds of other programs for single adults, so make no mistake that it's not limited there. I mean, we, we talked about, or I talked just briefly about all the other federal stimulus dollars in terms of workforce training monies and other job placement opportunities, the summer job programs. We have all kinds of things that have taken shape in the last few months that are really highlighting some good news uh, with the federal government's support. So there's a lot more out there than there was, candidly, last year, even before the economic crisis. Irony of ironies in terms of that federal largesse. You brought up the point there that you can give your niece a job. You know, for $75,000, what about $50,000? I mean, what kind of oversight? Well, there'll be, there, every single, well, there's a review process, there's a screening process, and we'll be very diligent. Um, I, you know, I was a bit tongue in cheek in terms of that example, but um, you know, you've you've got yeah, you've got a whole comprehensive. The, uh, analysis. All the employers uh, who participate are required to sign uh, to meet minimum qualifications, uh, which include paying minimum wage and, and, and other uh, requirements. But also, they have to sign a wage subsidy agreement, which spells out their responsibilities, reporting requirements that they sign and that I sign. I should say one more about one more piece just about the income threshold and, and sort of the big message and most important is you don't have to be on public assistance to take advantage of this and, and the way that and I'm very often frustrating and I see a lot of my staff here that uh, the way that the federal rules and the state rules are written around public assistance programs is that you have to be so poor and with so little assets uh, if you if you have a car that's valued at over five thousand dollars you're not eligible for example 
So you have families that have to spend through whatever assets they have to be, just to get on public assistance. Well, this program finally addresses that, that really arbitrary barrier and allows us to serve people who are truly in need, uh, who are unemployed, but they may have some assets and they may have a small amount of income that would make them ineligible otherwise. Talk about the, uh, the trickle down. So you sort of touched on it about how the money can also come into the city and be spent. And no, I mean, you said, and, and, and here's just to, to add to that. This is employers even outside of San Francisco. But it has to be employees that are residents of San Francisco. So the stimulus in the context of the money, the multiplier effect of bringing tens of millions of dollars into the city and the region creates, again, that multiplier of people then taking that income and purchasing groceries, benefiting their local community, benefiting their neighborhood, going to a movie, purchasing tickets, purchasing other goods and services. So the multiplier effect is huge. And we know that just through the earned income tax credit and other things that you'll generate exponentially more economic activity by drawing these dollars down. And that's the idea, the big idea behind the stimulus program was to generate that multiplier. The only limitation is now time. I mean, we could, if we could generate thousands and thousands, I'd love to have 10, 20, 30,000 jobs. It's just our ability to process them and to create those jobs between now and September 10th. Uh, and that's why, again, I'm just so eager to get this word out there and to get the information about this opportunity out there. But you've got to have the employers that are willing to do it. Uh, and uh, I said that 100% of this, the wages subsidized, it is. The only pickup the employer has is that workers' comp and that Social Security, which is a little less than, it's about 20% uh, that they ultimately have to pick up, uh, which is negligible. It's pretty modest. Any other questions on this? But the money runs out here. Yeah, it's program has to stop. Well, the money, unless, yeah, I mean, unless, and the money could run out if everybody else is leapfrogging ahead of us. I think we're uniquely positioned. I, I'm not worried about the money running out in the next few months. Candidly, I'm more worried about us running out of time and not disseminating this information. San Francisco is uniquely positioned to fast track this along. I think we're already a bit ahead of the curve. We've already demonstrated capacity to hire folks. We immediately worked after that state legislation was passed to start moving in this new direction. And uh, it's why, you know, I think you're going to hear me talk about this a lot in the next few months, more than you even want to hear it, because I have to get that information out there. It's just, it's too big of an opportunity to have squandered if we look back and, and, uh, and are not able to scale this. Yeah, is it, that's a great question. Is there a list of employer, employers that are already out there? I know that they they posted some. Yeah, there are there are job postings, Jim. Uh, do you, is there a listing of employee employees right employers right now for this? Well, it's kind of a fluid, always kind of a fluid mix. So we generally will post the job announcements at this one stop center. We're going to move that out to other one stop centers, yeah. and you know people will be competing in some cases more than one job. I mean, we had one great case. Where an individual was you come up here. Only yeah, come on, Jim. <laughs> it's, you say great case. I want everyone to hear it. Come on. This is, uh, this is uh, Jim Welly, who I failed to recognize when I was thanking my staff. But Jim's uh, operationally in charge of this. You got a fan club, Jim. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, but we had one great instance where uh, someone was at the center and they were kind of tears were coming down their eyes and we were saying, "Well, what's wrong? What's the problem?" And it's someone who walked away that day with three job offers from three different, em from three different employers. Right. And she said, I've never had this kind of choice <laughs> in my life. Wow. Thank you for doing this, you know, the program that we're operating. Yeah. So it's a wonderful human interest Again, story. Again, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, back to my too good to be true. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. We have an extended report, uh, the press corps here today. That's all right. Uh, that you touched on a little bit for kids and summer jobs. Yeah. Um, my kid, my daughter actually finally got a summer job this year after going through um, an organization over in the Bayview, and she now is working through the sheriff department, and I'm, I'm proud of her. And I just want to know, are you guys going to keep money going so the youth can keep working, like not just summer? Can she work during the school year and Going. Spend their own money and yeah. be 
be productive because she likes it. They're working out at San Bruno with agriculture, dirt, vegetables, you name it, foggy weather. They're going into the mountains later this year and they're excited. And I want to know, is something like that going to continue because she wants to yeah. keep going and still go to school? So our, our plan is to continue with the, uh, the young folks that started in the summer youth employment through jobs now to the degree that we can bridge it, particularly if they're 18 and over, because the jobs now age requirement is 18 and over. However, for individuals that are under 18, we have some additional stimulus dollars to, to um, sort of complete the year. And so we're working to figure out it will be less hours than they, you know, than they worked in the summer because those kids that are in um, school need to go continue school. So we will be able to continue some amount of hours if they're under 18. Okay, so that, when I talked about the bridge, that's what I'm referring to. And that's another set of stimulus dollars. Okay? Mm -hmm. oh, and uh, we'll just close with this, and it, it's uh, an important point. We're targeting, in terms of our outreach, those companies, and we have these, these strike teams. We've got this whole, I don't want to bore you with everything else we're doing in terms of this economic downturn. But we've really targeted or, and are going to target those companies that recently had layoffs in order to encourage those companies first to hire back the people they recently let go in this economy. So that's a big part of the primary focus of this effort in terms of that first stage, the first phase outreach. It makes, I think, ample sense to start there. And uh, we've already been working with a lot of these companies on retraining programs. They end up in our one-stop shops in terms of updating their resumes and getting unemployment insurance anyway. And so it's an opportunity to stop, uh, to reverse that trend as well. Thank you all very much.